One of the big decisions we must make as artists is which studio to use for our ideas. For example, many people will use the drawing studio when they want to create something realistic. That way they can add all the details and textures they notice in the image they are using. But sometimes I want to be more playful, use bright and expressive colors, and interesting patterns. When I'm in that mood, I like to use tempera in the painting studio. I still begin with a picture and then a drawing, finding my simple shapes. I'm using oil pastels for the drawing because this artwork is all about color. After your drawing is done, you're ready to set up your paint tray. You need tempera paint, a bowl of clean water. I got two paint brushes, one thick, one thin, a paper towel, and a white plate for mixing colors. And let's begin. Cleaning your brush is the most important part of using the temper paint. You wipe off the extra paint first on your paper towel, then rinse it in your water, and then dry it on your paper towel again. Then you're ready for a new color. I'm going to mix a color now. So I add white to the plate, dip the brush in red, and mix it into the white to create pink. The plate is for mixing your colors on, not the tray of tempera paints. A wonderful way to use tempera is to create layers. I'm painting stripes on top of the yellow. I just decided that my bee needed a flower to be getting pollen out of. Here I am painting white paint on top of the red paint, which blends together because they're both wet. For large, simple areas like the ground, I switch to the large brush. I decided to use liquid watercolors for the sky. Make sure you start with a clean, dry brush. Here I had a little problem where the watercolor got onto the black tempera and it spread a little bit. If you're adding anything black to your painting, you might do better using a Sharpie. The liquid watercolor dries so quickly, I'm able to add some more Bumblebee Friends right on top. Adding that bit of pollen to the center of the flower. Here's the part I think I enjoy the most, adding patterns on top of my underpainting. Dots in different sizes is one of my favorites, creating different thickness of lines 
is interesting. Dashed wiggly lines in the wings. What patterns can you think of to add to a painting? Let's try another painting using a fish as inspiration. Again, I'm using many different colored oil pastels to create my drawing. For this expressive animal paintings, we don't need to worry about what colors their animals are in real life. Just have fun with it. See how nice the pink paint looks on top of the orange paint? That is a layer of color, and it's one of my favorite ways to paint. purple water don't mind if I do and I'm using the liquid watercolor again I hope that you have fun if you try these expressive animal paintings. For best results, try to fill the paper with one large animal. You can always add little details later. <laughs> 